Please welcome the Group President of Consumer Operations, Technology, and Emerging Businesses at Marriott International, Stephanie Lenartz, in conversation with Skift Hospitality Reporter Cameron Spirance. Good day, everyone. I'm Skift Hospitality Reporter Cameron Spirance, and joining me today is Marriott's Stephanie Lenartz. Thanks for joining us for Skift Form Asia, Stephanie. Thank you for having me, Cameron. Great to be with you. Great. Well, let's just dive right in. I mean, it continues to be such an unprecedented year for global travel, no doubt about it. Stephanie, how have Marriott's customer expectations really changed with respect to staying at one of your hotels this year? Yeah, it really, it unprecedented, I think, is the, is the word of 2020 for sure, because the impact to travel in our business is really like nothing we've ever seen before. Um, just real briefly, at the, at the height of this, the downturn, our business was down 90, 95%. And I'm happy to say, though, we, I, we think we've really turned the corner with the second quarter being the, the worst point and, and things getting better every week and every month since then. But as it relates to customer expectations, I think, you know, um, obviously the health and, and safety protocols are of the utmost important to customers who are traveling these days. So we've always been very focused on the cleanliness and safety and security of our hotels, but we have taken it to a new level because of COVID-19 and the current situation. Um, we've set up a um, global uh, cleanliness council with both internal Marriott International experts on hotel operations and food safety, as well as external experts, and put together a very, very robust set of protocols for our hotels globally um, around you know wearing masks, we've made it mandatory that both guests and associates wear masks. Uh, deep cleanings, both during and in between stays, uh, particularly deep cleaning in public areas with mm -hmm. electrostatic sprayers that have very strong sanitizers, markers for social distancing, plexiglass at things like the front desk, um, et cetera. But really making sure that guests who are traveling feel as comfortable and safe as possible in our properties. Absolutely. And I, I mean, there's so many elements of your own cleaning program that seem pretty unique to Marriott. And I'm, I'm curious, I mean, looking ahead, are there any aspects that you think are going to stay with the company well after the pandemic has, has come to an end, hopefully sooner than later? Yes, hopefully sooner than, than later, for sure. I mean, I think some of the things that will stay with us are the adoption of some of the technology we're seeing as a result of the pandemic. We, I think the hotel industry has been a little bit behind the airline industry in terms of the hotel industry, the airline industry has had the mobile boarding pass for a long time. I think everybody uses that now. But we've seen a real increase in the adoption of mobile key at our hotels as one example. So people using their phone to check in and check out and as a key to get into their guest room. We've seen that adoption increase during this time. And that's the type of thing I think that will continue on as people get more comfortable using technology either to um, get into their room or to order food and beverage or for other purposes at, at the property. So the use of technology, I think, will, is something that will stick with us. Absolutely. Now, guest sentiment, I mean, as travelers have returned to your hotels following some of the tougher lockdowns that we saw earlier this year, I mean, what's the, what are you hearing from them? I mean, are they happy to see these new protocols? Are they really demanding them? And, or are they just really happy to be out of the house? I think people are really um, anxious to get out and travel again. Um, you know, we've seen, I mentioned at the depths of, of the pandemic, um, our business was down 90, 95%. We're now probably down about 65% uh, globally, uh, doing much better in China, incidentally, um, that business has recovered much more quickly. But um, I think people are really happy to get out of their homes and travel. We saw this summer a real increase in drive-to leisure business. Um, that's really the first to recover. Hotels in leisure locations, drive-to markets globally uh, doing better, for example, than hotels in urban locations that are more dependent on business travel or group. Um, but I think people just, people love to travel. We found that when we spoke to our guests, 50% um, of the people that took a trip this summer really felt comfortable taking another trip this fall. So we're gonna build off that sentiment and love of travel that mm -hmm. people have. And again, things are, are getting better every week, every month as we work through this. I think the last thing to come back will be international travel and big conventions, things of that nature. 
Now that's interesting hearing kind of that 50% number um, from a confidence standpoint. I mean, I know there's been sort of this question of heading into fall and winter months is, is the leisure travel that's led the rebound going to fall off a cliff, so to speak. But I mean, that sounds like it, it may not. If, uh, no. If no, I think the fact that people can, you know, a lot of people offices aren't open yet, so they can work mm -hmm. from anywhere. And um, kids, in some cases, not all kids are back to school. They're doing hybrid learning. So we've really seen an increase um, of people wanting to take extended trips and, you know, work from, you know, um, one of our hotels or one of our resorts somewhere. We've actually seen a big uptick um, since the beginning of fall in our homes and villas business with people renting homes for extended periods of time to work. And, and perhaps if they have children, you know, their kids can go to school from there as well. Interesting. And yeah, I, I mean, speaking of work from anywhere, you do have the work from anywhere initiative. And uh, this is something we've been reporting on quite a bit because, it, you know, it, it first, I think there was a little bit of head scratching of hotels being pitched as alternative office spaces. But I mean, there are a lot of entrants into the space. So I mean, what, what, what can you tell me about your own program? Yeah, so we are going to roll out work from anywhere with Marriott Bonvoy with a very tight connection to our loyalty program. And we will roll this out at um, starting with um, a number of markets and hotels in um, the United States, some in Asia, some in Europe. And you'll be able to get day passes for the hotel. And depending on the brand, we'll have different offerings. You know, the day pass will come with access to the amenities of the hotel. You may get a food and beverage credit, discounted parking, et cetera, depending again on the property of the brand. But the idea is that people really want to get out of their homes, new scenery and a break. And our hotel rooms, as I mentioned, the highest level of cleanliness. You know, you have desks, great Wi-Fi, uh, you know, private bathroom, et cetera. So we think that this is going to be quite interesting for, for especially talking to some of our top accounts about um, uh, experimenting with an option for people to get out of their homes and work um, at one of our hotels and purchase one of these day passes. And I, I think curious, as far as the concept, does it have longevity? Because we saw earlier this month an actual co-working company partner with a smaller hotel brand. And But I mean, even that partnership where you have an actual workspace provider um, has some in the real estate community saying this trend could last um, beyond when occupancy and daily rates at a hotel go back to pre-pandemic levels. So, I mean, what's your own outlook on, on how long we may be um, seeing this trend? Yeah, I mean, I think aspects of it could last beyond the pandemic as you see companies allowing people to work from different cities perhaps they hadn't thought of before and then people wanting to get out of their homes um, uh, maybe a day or two a week, right? Um, versus working, you know, five days a week from their home. But I do believe that over the you know, medium term, as we head into next year, people do want to get back to their offices and they want to get back to working um, with people. Well, there's a lot you can do from home through technology. There's nothing like being with um, people when it comes to um, strategy sessions or team building or if you're new to a company, training. So I am a big believer that we'll also see people get back into their offices, um, just like kids want to get back to school. <laughs> you know, uh, I know my kids do. You know, uh, this work, this school from home is okay for a while, but they're anxious to get back with people. And I think the same thing will happen with people wanting to get back to the office on um, at least um, part of the part of the time. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, looking at Asia is sort of a bellwether for how the industry may recover. I mean, your own boss, Arnie Sorensen, said that China may be back to pre-pandemic revenue levels as early as sometime next year. Um, given just sort of the rapidness of China's recovery, how is that informing your own outlook on how the rest of the world uh, may recover with respect to Marriott? Yeah, absolutely. China is recovering quite nicely. Um, I mentioned that at the height, we were down 90, 95. Globally, we're down 65% or so. In China, our business is only down 20% uh, versus last year. And to your point, we will um, uh, be back to 2019 levels, we believe, in 2021, so next year. So China really, you know, of course, the virus 
um, came um, out in China earlier in January. And uh, I think they did a very good job of containing the virus and uh, managing it. And as a result of that, we're seeing our business do quite well there. It is interesting, though, it is much more domestic business, China for China, um, than we saw before. As an example, pre-pandemic, about 70% of the guests in our hotels in China were from China, the rest being from other parts of the world. Now I'd say it's probably 95% of the guests in our hotels in China are from China. So there's not as much outbound business from China because of the pandemic. Um, which is benefiting our hotels in the country. But I do think the that's a good sign of um, the ability to get back to business and get back to life, even before there's a vaccine, as, as long as you can manage the virus in a safe way for um, for people. Absolutely. And, and I mean, I have to follow up to that. I know she represented a very, very significant uh, outbound uh, travel base. But given the fact that domestic travel is really leading the way right now, I mean, do you see any long-term impact there where maybe it's not uh, more Chinese travelers are looking to just stay within the country because they've had six or seven months to really uh, really get to know their own country rather than going to, say, the U.S. or Europe? Yeah, I, th I think time will tell. But um, again, I'm a believer that that people globally love to travel outside of their own countries and see the world whether um, we have a lot of, um, historically have seen a lot of Chinese guests travel to other parts of Asia Pacific, Thailand, um, you know, as, as one example, being a big uh, market uh, where we saw Chinese travelers visit, but throughout Europe, of course, and North America. So I'm a believer that people um, love to see their own countries and will certainly um, see, continue to see China be the biggest source market for China, but that when the time is, traveling outbound again um, because people love to experience new countries, new cultures, new experiences. And I think that's a, a global thing. Great. And, you know, moving past geography and more about differentiation in market segments, I mean, here in Asia, after months of outperformance by the economy scales, which we saw around the world, I, I know in the U.S. too, um, economy extended stay was really doing the best at the, at the depth of the pandemic. But, you um, since August, I mean, luxury hotels have been posting very impressive gains um, in China as well as other parts of the world. I mean, what are you seeing from from the market scales and um, where where travelers are tending to make the most uh, demand? Yeah, I do think that the luxury segment is is um, quite resilient. We have about four hundred and fifty luxury hotels in sixty five countries globally. Eight luxury brands: Ritz Carlton, Ritz Carlton Reserve. Edition, Bulgari, W, JW, luxury collection to name to name um, a few. So we are um, very strong in the luxury space, and we are seeing the luxury consumers really wanting to get out and travel and and see the world. So I'd agree that that's a segment that, particularly from a leisure perspective, we're seeing a lot of demand. Great. Well. Um Moving on, I, I do want to get updates on both the Bonvoy program as well as we've had a lot of uh, feedback from readers uh, wanting to know more about homes and villas. So um, real quick, last year you told Skift executive editor Dennis Shaw that north of 40% of Bonvoy signups were from China. Um, you know, I know it's been a brutal year for travel, but I mean, are you still seeing strong interest in the loyalty program, especially from, from China? We are, yeah. We have about 140 million plus global members, and um, uh, the past few years, a big percentage of the new signups coming from Asia Pacific and China specifically. Um, so last year, when um, we weren't in pandemic times, we were seeing about um, a net one million new members a month sign up, including in in um, the Asia Pacific region. Of course, given uh, what's going on right now, that has slowed down a bit. But we are seeing our members still um, engaged. Um, uh, we're doing a lot to make sure that they um, understand some of the offers we have for them for staycations, as one example. And Asia in, in would be a good example, and particularly in China, where we're seeing a lot of staycations. And we're doing special packages and, and offers for our Marriott Bonvoy members to keep them engaged with us. Um, there's properties in, in um, parts of China, 
um, and including Hong Kong, where we're seeing our hotels full on the weekends with people um, having staycations because they want to, again, get out and, and, and enjoy time with their families and friends. So we're keeping our Bonvoy members uh, very engaged. And Homes and Villas by Marriott International is a great example of an offering we have for our Bonvoy members. Great. And I, I mean, maybe this is kind of a good tie between the two. Um, you know, since we have seen leisure travel really lead the recovery right now compared to corporate transient, I, I mean, how do you adjust a loyalty program like Bonvoy to really cater maybe more to the leisure traveler than the business traveler than maybe you would have in the past? Well, it, it, you know, as I mentioned, we're putting together special offers and um, uh, programs for our Marriott Bonvoy oh. members. We have um, Marriott Bonvoy Escapes, where if you're a member, you can get a 25% discount off of our rates. Um, we have Marriott Bonvoy Escapes at our luxury properties, where you can get a credit, uh, a statement credit for the stay, where you can you know, get 250 US dollars or $300 for use at the spa. So we're putting together a lot of packages and offerings in the leisure space uh, for our Bonvoy members is a way to keep them engaged. And again, making sure that we are also, that they're aware that we have um, programs where you actually don't need to be staying in our hotel. We have a program called Eat Around Town with Marriott Bonvoy, where you can earn and utilize your points at local restaurants. Um, so we're making sure that our marketing efforts inform our members of things that they can do with their points um, and ways they can engage with us, even if they are not staying overnight in one of our hotels. So we're really, you know, really leaning into some of the other ways to engage with our members. Absolutely. And I'm sure our friends in the local restaurant industries really appreciate that. For sure. Um, so for homes and villas, I mean, short-term rentals have been quite a bit of a bright spot for the industry this year. And I mean, has the outlook on this division changed at all in light of COVID since customers maybe view this as one way to really have control over their travel experience? Yeah, we've seen a big growth in our business, um, Homes and Villas by Marriott International. I should note it is still overall, though, a relatively small business for us. When we launched in 2019, we had about 2,000 homes, and we are now up to probably about 12,000 homes. So it has grown quite a bit since our launch, but still, in the scheme of things, relatively small. But we've seen um, really the business uh, do quite well this year um, because of COVID. People want the safety and security of the Marriott International kind of stamp of approval. We only work with um, highly vetted HMCs, housing management companies. Um, we only we started with about 24 partners. Now we're up to about 70 HMCs we work with. But we have very strict standards um, for our homes, brand standards one plus bedrooms, washer, dryer, a whole list of um, things that must be met to be in the premium or luxury space. And I think the, the best part of homes and villas is that you can earn and you can utilize Marriott Bonvoy points. And as a matter of fact, over 90% of the people who are renting our homes are part of Marriott Bonvoy. So it's very clearly uh, a real win. And we've only seen that business increase during the pandemic. Again, particularly this fall, we're seeing people book shorter in, like you know, the booking window is shortened. People are booking uh, shorter in, and they're also booking for longer periods of time and larger homes, mm -hmm. all leading to this idea that people are going to, you know, if they're working remotely and perhaps their kids are going to school remotely, maybe they'll rent a home for a month and, um, and take an adventure as a family. So we've seen the business do quite well um, during this time. That's great. And I mean, looking ahead, I mean, do you see what growth opportunities do you see for Homes and Villas? I mean, are, are there regions of the world that you'd like to expand this product to? Or are they, and yeah, I mean, how do you make this, as you said, relatively small part of the company even bigger? Yeah, we'll continue to grow Homes and Villas by Marriott International very thoughtfully. Again, we want to stay in the, the premium and luxury space. Um, we have very strict standards, so by the, the nature of those standards, it's going to be a select group of homes that um, participate in homes and those. But we plan to grow the business thoughtfully. In, in many, many cases, the homes are in places where we don't have hotels. 
<laughs> so there are new destinations for our Marriott Bonvoy members. Um, and again, the ability to both earn and redeem Marriott Bonvoy points is a very attractive um, uh, offering for our Bonvoy members. Our idea is to make Marriott Bonvoy as deep and rich as possible from a travel perspective, which means, of course, offering 30 different hotel brands from the highest of luxury to more moderately priced hotels, but also offering homes. And you know, I mentioned a few moments ago, the ability to earn and redeem points at restaurants, local restaurants, et cetera. Great. Well, I like to end these conversations by looking ahead. So Stephanie, million dollar question. Um, as we covered earlier in the call, um, recovery on track as early as next year in China, but you know, in other parts of the world, we are looking at a couple of years away, um, if not longer. So. How does Marriott move forward with such geographic disparity um, in, in recovery timelines? Yeah, I, I believe that travel will be back. Um, I'm an optimist and I believe it will be back sooner rather than later be, because whether it's business travel, leisure travel, um, a mix of the two, I believe people love to travel. It's one of the great experiences in life, whether it's a more local trip um, in your own neighborhood or country or part of the world or an international trip, um, I think travel enriches our lives. And I think um, all people, we talk a lot about millennials and Gen Z loving um, travel, but I think um, even Gen X and, and, and boomers and other generations, depending on where in the world that you have different names for these generations, but I think people love to travel and I'm hopeful that travel will be back sooner rather than later. And we are going to make sure that um, we're in 140 plus countries where we're located, we're going to be ready to welcome them with open arms. Excellent. Well, let's get back on the open road sooner than later. So Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us as at Skiff Formation today. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you, Cameron. Have a great day. You too.